blessings and welcome forward to Reasonings right here at the Tree of Life on the road in Garden Town, St. Angel. Such a beautiful place, you know. It's always a pleasure to just be in the presence of nature, giving God thanks for the presence and just being able to share information and learn something even from the simplest of, you know, events. It's indeed a pleasure. Nature is such a, a synchronicity of events and correlations that it sparks the thought in me of just the fact that I've never spoken about heaven, though I've spoken about the underworld, I've never spoken about heaven. Though the underworld was wrought with a lot of soul churring and soul stirring events and experiences that will stay with me, hallelujah, till the day I transition. Heaven was a much more brief event and it wasn't a vision of I journeying there. It was a sight of my presence being there and I will explain all that I saw and again I must say to you I was surprised what I saw and um, I must say when one shares their personal experience I guess there's a bit of vulnerability I guess we all can admit that right because humans intrinsically want to be right as though we are socialized but sometimes our experiences don't fit into the right attitudes of others or the right you know, thought processes that come to a correlation, that come to an understanding, that come to a conclusion. So bear in mind with me, this has been my experience and I have no script that I'm following so that I can read from to match up with all who have been to this point or this place in the cosmos. My vision of heaven. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. First, I was in self, in person, like the being right here in my vision. And I was then being shown heaven. So I saw it first standing off, like in my human form, on my spirit, looking at heaven. Or well, the spirit is saying, do the parable first before. Let me do the parable, then I come forward. My parable towards the old argument is this. As a child growing up, I did not hallelujah, believe in heaven. No one could tell me of heaven. No one could tell me of any place, any realms, any dimension where there was this absolute of anything. No one could convince me as a child of heaven. Neither could you convince me of a God. And that's the absolute fact I'm telling you. Hallelujah. Even more so when I became on the path of my spiritual journeys and searching through my darkness, through my, my twilight. You could not tell me of heaven. And especially when the images of heaven were from white minds. And this abuaya, me, that you tell they are so, me not deal with white heaven. I don't deal with white heaven. Okay? So all these white heaven with these white angels, I don't deal with white heaven. So that had no place in my psyche. No visions, nothing of nuts, none such place could ever come into my psyche. Right? No heaven for me. Heaven, state of mind, state of being, state of consciousness. Until my awakening. Upon my awakening and the providence of who came from heaven thus forth into earth affirm for me that it is a place that he has come from hence it is a place that we will go end the first discussion heaven is a place not a state of mind it's a hallelujah it's a place it's a dimension it's a frequency on the wavelength beyond the ones that resonate matter the heavens and the earth declare the glory of the Most High. The heavens is his abode. Now to my vision. So this youth, I'm not have no vision of heaven. See me, I have to go into the patwa because when you are talking from the art, in certain things you have to be as clear as you can be. Listen and you'll understand. Because I don't have no view of God and the place named heaven. When I got awoken, it was the first introduction to any premise that there was ever such a place. Upon now asking if it was possible now, because 
<laughs> oh boy. This topic couldn't happen without the most I guided me. There's so much things I'm leaving out. Number one, <laughs> the Lord is saying, Jerome, don't forget to mention this. And this is this. <laughs> Upon my awakening, the journey to becoming more aware of God and Christ in my life and is saving me. You know, say the premise of heaven was the last thing I ever, ever approach. You know, say in every question I ask reincarnation, I ask about everything. Hallelujah. You know, say I never ask about heaven. Hey! I never ask about heaven. I never ask. It was so inside of me that there was, and I just didn't. Long into the alignment, two years into that personal relationship with God, way, way in. Probably for more than two years, to be honest. Before I even started thinking about that. To even reach to the point of asking. Then I asked, and one day, Hallelujah! I got the vision. What did I see? I stood as if I stood as a man, looking up into the skies. When I looked, my eyes of spirit was open. I saw that there was a portal opening in the clouds. The Spirit said to me, you are looking into heaven. Behold, what did I see? I saw giant beings like men, black men, with hairs cut like the kid and play ear styles, coming down to earth. And the Lord said, these are angels descending to earth. When I looked, I saw other forms of the same beings, but they had wings. So I wrote the song, the poem at the time. Angels with without the wings fits the form of everything. Because it was hallelujah, a vision I beheld of heaven. I said, Lord, I never believed in heaven. I never knew heaven was real. Because I always thought heaven was white. And if it was white, I knew it was a lie. I knew it was a lie. Racism couldn't trick me. So, I saw black beings descending from heaven. First thing that opened up my heart. Hallelujah. I wanted to go now. And that wasn't the shocking thing, you know, to see the, the angels with and without the wings. You know what the shocking thing was? When my spirit man now was transported <clears throat> into heaven. Let me tell you something. People, hmm. I don't know. I remember what I saw. Hallelujah. And I will tell you. I don't know how to say this to you. Because it is deeply mind-boggling though it was such a short visit in spirit. I stood there and I saw the most technologically hallelujah, advanced environment I have ever seen. No psych, we call it, no cyber movie, no space movie, none could capture the level of technology and automation and unique organization of everything I saw in heaven. I saw a world, hallelujah, I saw a world, hallelujah, I saw a world happening with beings. You want to know what one of the biggest shocker was? I saw what we call spacecraft just lifting up, traveling, just just, just amazing things. I, I, I couldn't believe that this, this is heaven. I couldn't believe it. Do you understand? I was taken away. My next question was, and this one was a shocker. The answer was a shocker. Not a question. The answer was a shocker. Hallelujah. I said, where is God? I'm almost emotional, but I always said to the Spirit, I'd rather smile than cry, so I don't want to cry. Hallelujah. I'm not going to cry. I said, where is God? I asked everybody. They said, they pointed me to what appeared to be a planet. 
and all that emitted from the planet was light. It was all light. And they said, God lives there. That's where he abides. That's his abode. And it was the light of everything on that planet. It was why everything operated. It was why everything was harmonious. Hallelujah. And they said there are times when some of them would go and visit. But I, when I remember the Bible, I remember that the word said, Uriel, Gabriel, and two other angels are the only ones that can even come, that can even come near to his presence. The presence of God is so intense that even the highest of the arcs can be in his presence. The creatures that serve him and sing his praises for eternity are special beings, hence why they can stand his presence. When I read back the Bible, in that word I recalled the Lord, the word that said that even the angels, the most powerful of them, hallelujah, couldn't bear his presence, couldn't bear to look into his face. They had to speak to him with their faces down, bow down in absolute devotion because they cannot look upon his light. Hallelujah! So in heaven, the Lord is their light. But the light is above them and it surrounds them all. It is, it is through them. It is by which the technologies work. It is through which everything works. And the next thing I should tell you too about that place that I picked up. Everybody is telekinetic and connected. When I asked the question, everyone answered, Hallelujah. No one did not not know. All knew. All knew. There is a harmony in heaven that is not philosophical, that is not ecumenical, that is not highly salubrious. Hallelujah. There is an actual Hallelujah. There is Hallelujah. There is an actual harmony. Actually. Not wishful thinking, not imagination, not imaginative thinking, or thoughtscaping. Actual harmony. Everyone knew. No one was in doubt. No one lacked no win. No one was deficient. Though my experience of heaven wasn't hallelujah as intense as my time in the underworld. I spent eight years there in the underworld. I spent a few moments in hallelujah in my spirit in heaven. I didn't get to go around and walk around as much as I wanted to because unfortunate and sad to say my vision petered off hallelujah upon my looking hallelujah upon where God was that's where my vision hallelujah that's where my vision ended I was I was looking upon where is abode. I was looking upon the light. So I didn't have much time beyond to look at anything else after that point. And that has been my vision of heaven. First standing in my spirit as my being, looking in, seeing the angels with without the wings, coming down to earth, fitting the forms of everything helping us along the path of our spiritual journey back to our home. Then my entrance into heaven and being astounded at the high level of spiritual and celestial technology that if you think the firmament is beautiful, you need to see heaven. You need to see heaven. And the Spirit is reminding me that I had one other contact of heaven many, many years ago. I read C.L.S. Lewis's book the Great Divorce. 
and he talked about the dense dark gray um, dark souls not that were in the land just beyond the land of the lights and when I started reading the book I entered into the book and everything became real I saw that I was one of those beings that had the gray and the, the spirit is saying gray. C.S. Lewis is it as brown. The spirit is saying it is gray. Hallelujah. So I will stay with the spirit. I will not try to adjust. So the gray form that I saw that I was in. Hallelujah. That gray form was afraid. It hid in the twilight shadows. And we were being warned, as the story said, that there were beings of light that were solid in light. And those solid light, hallelujah, man. Come on, no man. The solid light beings, hallelujah, man. The solid light beings, they came to minister unto us. But because we still had fear in us, because we still had attachment to the world and to our sinful deeds, our gray energy was afraid to transform into the light, solid light bodies, into the solid light beings. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, we were always hiding from the light creatures until we got braver and braver and they taught us we were to come over from the fringes. And I behold, as we were going into the land of the light, where the solid light beings were from. That was my first glimmer into heaven. The Lord is just reminding me of that. Hallelujah. Because I recognized something. When I read that book, I entered in. It was an astral and a spiritual experience. And at, the and at the time, I knew it was real. Because I saw the being. Very few times have I read a book or got, gotten to experience information that it comes alive to me, that hallelujah, that I feel it, hallelujah, as my life. And I felt it as, I felt it as my life. Until that moment of being transformed and taken up into heaven. Heaven is a real place. It is a real place with real beings and the beings aren't just human beings. Let me be clear. Let me declare the Spirit said, Hallelujah. 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 Heaven is a place with beings and they're not just human beings and angels. There are other beings, many other types of beings. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There are many other kinds of beings that are present. Heaven is a wonderful, glorious, functional, hallelujah, functional space. Not a mindscape. A functional space like this plane is functional, hallelujah. It's a functional space, a functional plane. No deception, no slight of speech, not a slight of words, real place. So, for many who say there is no point to this life, hallelujah, there is no destination to this life, or this is all that there is, metamorphic man, transient man, there is an eternal and there's an eternal abode. And there is a Lord and a God seated, abundantly abiding in that abode. Wholesomely, wholeheartedly and completely. And this is my testament and this is my testimony of my few frames, the few glimpses I have gotten of the constant from this Present. Welcome, Divine Angel. Welcome. I'm just feeling the presence. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just feel in the presence. Hallelujah. The vibrations of the angels are highly, vi are highly vibrational, highly vibratory. It's intense because they come from an absolute place, a place of the absolute. That is why we must be clean to encounter them. That's why we must be clean to approach them. Our own sins will destroy us. The Lord Yahshua the Christ did not condemn us. Neither did he come into the world to condemn us. But men are condemned by their darkness, by the rejection of the light. We reject heaven in our consciousness. We reject heaven in our hearts. Because we reject it, we suffer ourselves to be locked out, to be outcast, cast out and unworthy. We can again become worthy by affirming our destination to be sure, to be exactly what we desire. You may not know how, you may not know when, but you will get there. And death isn't your passport. Because I know many of those who talk about heaven is when you die. But yet the word talk of humans who are caught up to heaven. Hallelujah! So that's erroneous to suggest that humans have never been taken up and spared death, of course. But Christ conquered death because death was what the rule of the abyss was using to hold our souls here. That many souls fear death to the point where they lose connection with heaven, with home. They lose the telepathic. They lose the highly vibratory, the spiritual connection. And then they're fulfilling some other reality. They don't know whence they're coming and they don't know whence they're going. So they don't know that they're coming from the heavenly abode of which their soul should return to abide. And hence they do not know that heaven is real. And hence they do not know that heaven and earth is created by our creator. And here on earth beneath the firmament is a gift unto us. But because of the debauchery that started in heaven above the firmament, the Lord thy God has said, Behold, in the end of days there shall be, I shall shake heaven and I shall shake earth, because behold, I shall make a new heaven and a new earth. And the rainbow bridge in between will be continued. The garden will be the unison, the intersecting point. The rainbow bridge of frequencies, the garden, the lotus of the heart, where God abides, where he still can come and have concordance with you and providence with you, where we can have presence and function. The garden will be open unto you, cleansed and reborn, renewed. And the Lord shall be your God, he shall be your light, because there is no night in Zion. There is no night there because the Lord is our light and we praise Him continually day and night. So giving thanks for the eternal light, the one that is the actual light. All of the lesser lights are but abstractions, refractions of the celestial divine light which is our Creator, which even in heaven is separate and apart from all forms, the light is taken because the source, which is the actual light, is our life. The owner and keeper of our life and to him, to the divine, is the onus for all things created. Blessings for those who are seeking truth. Remember the path, no stairways to heaven, the pathway to heaven through the heart through your functions in life, through how you live, through how you have lived, through how you will live, 
through how you will continue his presence through you as you in this life hallelujah grow full joy this beautiful experience return to your first love because remember it is he that has first loved hallelujah us blessings on your pathways to heaven in the grace of the living creator it's been my pleasure to share my mordicum of experience in the celestial home of our creator thank you so much for sharing this thought with me this experience with me in thy honor and thy glory i thank most high god bless and watch over us protect us that we may come and share in your eternal providence humble at your feet that we may be in the home of creator the blessings of creation may fill us that we may come to know our true selves thank you very much for sparing a moment in your thought most high father holy angels in your presence in the presence of all my friends and all those in earshot and for all who will come onto this video heaven is a real place seek ye to return to your true home